New month, new studio. Welcome to MC4C News. Coming up this time, the latest guidance on what you can and can't do, where you need to wear a mask, news about benefits, and how MC4C is keeping advice and guidance on stream, online, for you, despite everything. The weather's been pretty hot, hasn't it? And if you're lucky enough to have a garden to sit out in or you found a quiet spot in your local park to enjoy the sun, remember you should wear sunscreen of at least 15 SPF with a four or five star rating and it should give UVA and UVB protection. And you don't need to pay ridiculous prices. There are cheaper alternatives in some stores in town. And when you're out in public, you need to carry a mask or face covering with you. There's a growing number of places where wearing a face covering is compulsory now. These include public transport, trains, buses and taxis, and train and bus stations, shops, supermarkets, shopping centres and indoor markets, post offices and banks, hair salons, barbers, nail salons, tattoo and piercing parlours, vets, museums, galleries, cinemas, aquariums, bingo halls, amusement arcades, libraries, churches and places of worship, community centres, youth centres and social clubs, and public areas in hotels and hostels. So that's almost everywhere. You can buy masks and face coverings from a large number of places online, and if you want to make your own, visit the Big Community So website where you can download patterns and instructions and watch videos, as well as link with groups in your area making masks to help others in the community. And there'll be more on that in our next bulletin. The Making Changes for Careers programme have been phenomenal in their response to the ongoing global pandemic, supporting people ages 16 to 29 either in finding employment, gaining valuable working skills, or even setting up their very own business. We've been proud to help you so far and we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. You can always rely on us. Because infection rates have been increasing in certain areas such as Leicester, Greater Manchester and parts of West Yorkshire, as of the end of July, plans to allow certain public events to go ahead have been postponed and bowling alleys and skating rinks, for example, remain closed. So the government's message is still Stay alert, control the virus by social distancing, and save lives. Figures from the Office for National Statistics show the number of people claiming universal credit and job seekers allowance in Hull rose from around 9,600 in February to nearly 16,500 in May, a rise of about 71%. And more than one in four people of working age in Hull and the East Riding are now on some form of state benefit. If you're receiving universal credit, you'll have noticed an increase in your payments since lockdown was introduced. A House of Lords committee has recommended that this increase be made permanent, along with a whole raft of other recommendations to make the universal benefit better suited to claimants' needs. Among their recommendations are a non-repayable two-week grant for all claimants, payments fixed for three months to allow better budgeting, and a choice of once or twice a month payments. But these are only committee's ideas and there is no suggestion as yet that the government will adopt all or any of the recommendations. If you're on universal credit and it expected that eventually all claimants will be transferred to this new benefit, it's important that you tell DWP any changes to your circumstances so you keep getting the right amount each month. Changes can include finding or finishing a job, having a child, moving in with your partner, starting to care for a child or disabled person, moving to a new address, changing your bank details, your rent going up or down, changes to your health condition. You can report a change of circumstances by signing in to your Universal Credit account. 
One person who's scrutinising government support for Hull through the pandemic is Hull Western Hazel MP Emma Hardy. Recently, at Prime Minister's Question Time, she asked Boris Johnson how he intends to tackle a looming unemployment crisis in the area. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Social Market Foundation report identified Hull as the area facing the worst economic hit and the slowest recovery to COVID-19. Now, I have stood here in this place and called on the government for support for the caravan manufacturing, for Hull Trains, The Deep, Hull City Council, excluded young entrepreneurs and many others, and received an inadequate response from the government that fails to address the gravity of the situation Hull faces. What the Prime Minister needs to recognise is that you cannot level up by shutting down. So what new support will he give to prevent job losses in Hull West and Hesel? Hear, hear. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, we've already given uh, the East Riding uh, of Yorkshire over £21 million to deal with the pressures of coronavirus. We've uh, supported 90% of, of caravan manufacturers uh, who she rightly supports with the, the furlough scheme. And uh, as she knows, we have not only the Kickstarter uh, fund, the £2 billion fi Kickstarter fund to help uh, young people into work, uh, but also the, the job retention of the furlough uh, bonus scheme to, to retain people in their jobs as part of a massive uh, package, £640 billion overall, to get our country moving again and make sure that we bounce back stronger than ever before. In recent weeks, we've seen pubs, cafes and restaurants reopen, and now we can start going to gyms and cinemas again, as long as we observe social distancing. One young man who will be hoping that theatres and concert halls can reopen soon is Robert Langham, an usher at Hull New Theatre and City Hall. Robert spent more than eight years looking for his ideal job before, with MC40's help and encouragement, he found it. It took me almost the good end of eight years and that's been through doing a number of courses and including those courses, it's uh, included a, an apprenticeship. After that, um, I was on Job Seekers for maybe, I'd say, three, four months. And then uh, when I, when, through my mum, she told me that whole City Council was recruiting for a um, whole new theatre. And without a shadow of a doubt, I just dashed over to the nearest computer and tried to get my name in the hat. Can you Robert? Yeah, fine, thank you. Oops. Have you got the doors? I, I went permanent first didn't get it, but then through the support of MC40, they encouraged me to uh, go and apply for the casual post, so I did, and to my surprise, I got an interview, and then from that, transpired saying that I was suitable. Good afternoon, sir. KK26 and 27. KK26 27, which is just on that far section there, and it's about the middle row. Whilst I was pursuing a job in business and admin, um, MC Forsey told me about uh, a SAGE course that would use, help me to uh, do finance, um, computer financing. And I thought that was an opportunity too, too good to miss. So I took that and I successfully passed all the tests that I needed and got the qualifications. When I was told about MC Forsey initially, I thought, not really, because it was all to set up their own business. But when I found out that they supported people into employment, I thought it was an opportunity too, too good to miss. So I think if anyone else wants to join, it's a good way to, to support both sides. There you go, sir. Enjoy the show. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We wish Robert and all his colleagues at theatres and halls well. If you're one of hundreds of people with tickets to cancelled shows at the new theatre or city hall, you'll have been emailed by the box office offering you a refund or credit, or in some cases a transfer of your tickets to rescheduled dates for shows next year. And there's more information at this website. MC4C has been working from home since March, initially contacting most of our current and past participants to make sure they were safe. If you're watching this and we haven't been able to get in touch with you, please give us a call or a text telling us 
what you're doing and if we can help you further, such as helping you find work. And who better to help you do that than my colleague Charlene. I asked her how she's been rolling out the MC4C programme away from the office. It's been quite challenging, I'd say, the last few months. Um, working from home, having my child at home, helping her with her own work and doing my day job. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a full on job. Uh, was, I'm sat at my dining table every day at my computer. I'm ringing all the participants just to make sure they're doing okay as well. We're there as a friend as well. Um, we're offering them all support we can. My job is basically to help them get all the skills they need to set up in business or to get them into employment. We offer all the enterprise skills such as um, financial literacy, creativity and innovation. Um, I'm offering these via Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp, um, all virtual um, logins. Um, I'm doing it as well by a post because some people can't get online all the time. So I think we're just there for them. And some, like I say, some are wanting employment. So that's my role. That's where I'm looking at getting them maybe extra qualifications to get them that particular role they're wanting. And I'm researching all different employers. I'm searching through all agencies. I'm looking on social media. It's a massive platform at the moment to look for work. We both have our specialisms. As you said, you concentrate mainly on those who are wanting employment and I'm concentrating mainly on people uh, who want to set up in business on their own. Um, yep. But we always say, don't we, that it doesn't have to be either or. Quite a few of our young people want um, uh, a little job or it may not be all that little a job, yep. a part-time job anyway, uh, that sort of pay the bills while they begin to set up their business. And we're able to do that as well for them, aren't we? Exactly, exactly that. Yeah, a lot of them are wanting to set up in business. So they go through yourself and you're still offering them the, the big support that they need for that and helping them with the business plans. But in the meantime, they do want to get financially sorted because some, you know, some may still be living at home with parents and they just don't have the viable, the viable resources. So, yeah, so I'm looking for just a little part time work or maybe just some temporary positions. Um, and there's, like I said, there's a lot about at the moment. So yeah, so some people, like I said, some people want both. So I think, you know, we, we work together massively. Are you finding that people are wanting jobs at the moment? Are they aware of the very difficult employment situation at the moment? Yeah, it, well, again, um, it's like I say, it's challenging. There's a lot more people on universal credit at the moment um, or being laid off from their job. So there's, like uh, over a hundred people applying for that one particular job so it is it's very it's very difficult at the moment but yes um we offer massives of support you know we are like you said emergency grants we're supporting people who are in need at the moment with just anything you know we have a lot of single parents so we're supporting them in every way we can possible but yeah in regards to work um it's just we I'm, I'm helping them uh, upgrade their CV so they've got that better chance you know they're I'm sending them courses at the moment so it gives them that better chance as well if they've got their English and maths if they've got particular customer service skills and you know um because a lot of them want retail so I think things like this will help them get the job they want and I think it's just all if they want it they will get it at the end of the day they've just it's it's believing in the self it's having the confidence because a lot of our learners a quite low self-esteem or the start off being low self-esteem and these skills these big 13 enterprise skills help them massively get to be the leader that they want to be get them to be rating the self more the well-being has been affected in every case everyone's been affected by it myself i've been affected by it. you know you get you get to the point where you're quite lonely or you i'm very social i like to interact with people and um, but this at the moment is a new normal. You know, I like to see your face every day, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, for the for the young people we have, they a lot of them are quite vulnerable. They they do need the family support. They need the friends support. And getting them out into work, meeting new people, is great for their for their well being. What are you missing about normal life? Oh, just 
just cuddling people and interacting with people like I normally would. Like I'm quite, like I say, I've, I'm very social. I like going to my local bar. I like going to my friends' houses with the children and letting them play. And whilst we sit and chat and just being close. Um, yeah, I just, I, I miss it all. I really do like, I miss going into the office every single day and spending time with my work colleagues and the learners that participate every day. It's just, it's, it's very frustrating at times. But again, you know, we are all safe. We're all staying safe. So, you know, it's something we have to do as well. So as long as all my family and friends and well, everyone, as long as everyone's keeping safe and looking after themselves, I am more bothered about that than anything else. The inevitable Zoom call. When I was younger, Zoom was a nice lolly. Remember them? Ah, Lady Penelope. Depending on your age, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. And it won't be the first time somebody said that to me. Till next time, stay safe. Home Parker.